It's Hop Along Cassidy. With action and suspense, out of the Old West comes the most famous hero of them all, Hop Along Cassidy, starring William Boyd. The ring of the silver spurs heralds the most amazing man ever to ride the prairies of the early West, Hopalong Cassidy. This famous hero thrills his 60 million fans with action and dangerous adventure. In the role of Hopalong Cassidy is the popular star of the motion picture series, William Boyd. And now, another exciting story of the early West. Hoppy takes the bull by the horn. It's a lovely autumn day on the Bar 20 Ranch, one of those days when a nice hammock swung between two shady trees is the greatest contentment known to California Carlson, pal of Hopalong Cassidy. But it so happens that Hoppy is doing the swinging while California relieves the cook on his day in town. If you think this makes California happy, well, you have another thing coming. Well, concern it, I just ain't going to do it. I ain't no cook, and I ain't gonna take the cook's job while he's gone. Eh, go on break. Just one last pan to wash. When you get those pans clean, California, I'll tell you what I'd like to have you do. When I get these pans done, I'm arresting for the rest of the day. I don't want to never see another cook shack. <laughs> <here. laughs> uh, hold it, California. Uh, it. You've just worked yourself up to such a fever, you're not going to be able to mend fences or anything. I ain't mending nothing. I'm humiliated. <laughs> <laughs> Me wearing a white apron like an ordinary Jasper. Well, then maybe you'd like to take a trip. Yeah, I just ain't gonna... Uh, uh, a trip? Yeah. Oh, well, now, doggone it, you're talking stuff I can understand. Uh, when do we leave? Tonight. Where to? Silver Creek. Mm-hmm. Now, that's a pretty darn good ride, Hoppy. Is it important? It sure is, California. Remember I tried to buy old man Parker's bull at Hereford with all the prizes? Oh, now, just a minute. Don't tell me Parker would ever let nobody buy that bull. Parker won't. But his son wrote and said if I wanted to buy the bull, he'd sell. Hmm. Well, what does old man Parker say? Nothing. He passed away a week ago. And your son ain't got no more respect than that for him. I know. But if he is going to sell... It don't seem right. But I know how hard you tried to buy him. I hardly believe my eyes, California. But there it is, right there. We'll let you have the bull for 4000 Why, that's stealing, Hoppy. That critter's worth three times that much. I know. That's what's funny. Well, then I guess we'd better be getting ready to ride. I know you sure want to get there and see that bull. Yeah, and I'd also like to get there and see old man Parker's son. There's something wrong here, California. I'd like to know what it is. Now back to Hopalong Cassidy and our story, Hoppy Takes the Bull by the Horns. Hopalong has an offer to buy a famous bull which he has tried to buy for two years. The offer comes from young Parker who took over the ranch when the father died. The price is $4,000. While Hoppy appreciates such a bargain, he also is suspicious about the whole thing. However, he draws the 4000 from the bank in new $100 bills and heads for the Parker Ranch at Silver Springs. But I'm sick of hanging around this forlorn section of the country, Ruth. Let's take your share and go back to Denver where we'll be happy. Look, Jack, out of respect for my father, I'd appreciate it if you'd stop hounding me to go. I was raised on this ranch. I love it. I loved my father. Of course you did, but Ruth, we're married now. I'm your husband. Your first duty's to me. That's partly true, yes. But I've had a talk with Mr. Curtis, and according to him, I have no voice in the handling of the estate. I get one fourth. In cash? Jack, answer me honestly. Did you go into Silver Springs and gamble again? Now, wait, Ruth. I... I see. So you have. After promising me you'd never touch another card. It was just a little friendly game, Ruth. How much did you lose? Well, around 3000 But I'll pay it, and I promise Pay it you... with what? Why, maybe I could borrow it from that lawyer fella. I'm sorry, but Mr. Curtis hates cards and gambling in any form. But I have to get the money, Ruth. 
This is the fine man I married. Crawling and sniveling and weak. I am. Uh, all right, I'll show you. I'll pay it back myself. I'll get the money. Money? Did I hear someone mention money? If you were listening, you did. Oh, now, Sears, is that a way to talk to your brother who's been gone 20 years? You're not a brother to me. I know it must be strange seeing me after all this time, but I'll not bother you long. I'm selling the stock. <gasps> You're selling the stock? No, you can't. It's the only way. I've invited Hopalong Cassidy and his partner here tonight for a barbecue. He's buying Hereford Giant for 4000 4000 huh? In cash? I thought money would interest you, Jack. I'm an heir, too. Don't forget that. And I'll keep Hereford Giant if it's the last thing I do. But, Ruthie, dear, he's nothing but a, a male cow. I mean that, both of you. That bull never leaves this ranch. <laughs> I've been looking for you, Cassidy. You must have slipped by me. Sit down here in the patio a moment. Oh, how do you do, Mr. Curtis? As soon as we rode in, this young Parker fella grabbed us and made a deal. You mean he sold you the bull? That's right. Uh, I wish you'd have seen me first, Mr. Cassidy. I'm afraid there's going to be trouble over that deal. Well, now, it's legal, ain't it? No, oh, you're in the right. But uh, Ruth, the daughter, will never stand for it. Uh, that kind of makes a difference, Mr. Curtis. But a deal's a deal, and young Parker's got the money. You've already paid him? In cash, and I have a bill of sale from him. I'm afraid this means trouble, Cassidy. Oh, here you are, Curtis. I've been looking for you. You didn't look soon enough. Now, look here. Am I the legal owner or not? Well, of course, it was your father's Don't wish Don't talk that... around the subject. Legally, yes, but morally you to have no... sell anything, huh? Well, if my buying the bull is upsetting you, the I... The sale's legal, Mr. Cassidy, and it stays that way. I don't mean to interfere, Parker, but my position in this matter is one of importance. There's only one thing of importance, Curtis, and it's this, see? Money. Four thousand of it. And more tonight when I sell those yellings. Why, they ain't ready for sale yet, young fellow. California, uh, it's really none of our business. Yeah? Well, Curtis, while I'm busy, you might as well be a good host and show Mr. Cassidy and his friend the ranch. And... Uh... Yes. I'll join you at the barbecue. I want Mr. Cassidy to enjoy himself. Uh, enjoy himself? <laughs> like a tender hand. California. Well, I've done all I can, Cassidy. I've been thinking a bit, Curtis, about this young Parker. Well, of course, you remember 20 years ago, a little misfortune. His wife left with a boy, and old man Parker raised the girl. She married last month in Denver, a city dude. Yeah, about this son. Where's he been? Uh, says he's been in South America. Just come back the day before the father died. He should have stayed in South America, the upstart. Doesn't seem to have much affection for the ranch. Yep. We even suspicioned that maybe he wasn't really the Parker boy. But his sister and I asked him things that happened when he was just a little fella, and nobody, not one other soul, could have answered the questions we asked him. And he answered them? Right down to the time his mother dropped a wagon tongue on her foot and went around with a cast for a year... Then he remembers the big wind that blew the roof off the shed and killed his little pony. He even told us the name of the pony. Zippo was its name. Well, darn. If I ever had a son like him, I'd horsewhip some sense in his skull. Well, that's how things are. I'm only telling you because I know you're an old friend of Parker Sr. That's right. And I don't envy you your job handling the affairs as they now stand. I'll go take another look at Hereford Giant. I'll... Join you after I get washed up. And we'll be in time for the barbecue. Eat, eh? Well, now that's the first interesting thing I heard since we come. Uh-huh. And I got an idea, California. It isn't the last interesting thing. That there is the shed where the bull is, Hoppy. Uh, I don't think anybody's going to care if we look at our own bull, huh, California? I reckon not. But you know, Hoppy, that young Parker fellow was mighty anxious to get his hand on that cash. That's not our affair. Hoppy. Huh? Who's this cutting around the fence heading this way? Well, it's a man. Nothing wrong in that. Yeah, he's coming right toward us. Are you ready for most anything? I've been a-doing just that ever since we got here. Mr. Cassidy, i got to see you a minute. It's something important. Oh, it's uh, Ruth's husband. Yeah. Say, Mr. Cassidy, you 
bought the bull, I understand. That's right. And paid in cash. Well, what's wrong with that? Wait, well, nothing. I, I was just wondering if you'd like to buy some of those smaller cows. We have a lot of money. I'd sell them very cheap. You mean those yearlings? I don't know how old they are, but if you'd buy a couple hundred of them, I'd take almost half price. Oh, boy, that's right down, uh, down right, uh, well, close to stealing. Oh, no, no, it's not. Ruth, my wife, owns some of this stock, and we want to go back to Denver. Why are you so anxious to make a deal out here in such a hurry? I just told you. It, I, that is, we'd like to get our share and leave. Well, I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll talk to Ruth, and if she puts a fair price on him, I'll... No, 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 no. Don't say a word to Ruth. I don't want her troubled with such things. Well, young feller, there's something sour about your dealings. Yeah, California's right. I don't think there's any way we can get together on this. Very well. I trust you gentlemen enough to say nothing about my proposition. You can depend on it, unless... Unless what? Unless it becomes necessary. Now, excuse me, I want to take a look at that Hereford giant. I'll be right back, California, and we'll get over to the barbecue. Right, Hoppy. Go around there, cowboy. Who are you looking for? Who are you? It don't make no difference who I am. I'm here to see that bull don't leave this barn. But I just bought that bull. Hey, he's mighty quiet and well-behaved. Eh, let me get a look at you. And don't get no notions that I'm an ordinary Renahan. I'm not looking for trouble. I raised this here bull from the time he was a day old. I helped him grow up. And I promised old man Parker I'd see to it that nothing happened to his bull. You'll have to take that up with young Parker. I aim to... Now, go on. Get out of here. Just a minute. I bought the bull, paid for it. Stole it, you mean? Stinking 4000 How do you know so much? Why, I, well, I got ears. Does young Parker discuss his business with you? Why, you... Here, here. What's going on? It's not going on. It's all over. What's the meaning of this, Hank? More than you think. There's them around here that's going to wish they was never born. Believe me, Hoppy, this has been a nightmare since young Parker came. And Ruth's husband hasn't helped any, has he? I, uh, I don't care to discuss that, Hoppy. Of course, I know how that cow hand feels. Yeah. I'll check and see if Hank's been feeding her for giant right. I think California and I'll pull out early in the morning. Things seem pretty tense here. Uh, plenty of hay. Enough to last them if Hank never comes back. Well... Shall we walk over to the barbecue, Hoppy? Sure. California's waiting for us outside the barn. Oh, is he? Well, Herford Giants is getting a little restless. I guess having visitors is too much for him. Yes. Maybe he'd rather be by himself. Guess so. Well, let's get our share of that barbecue, huh? Eh? Where'd you say California is? Well, I left him right here. Maybe the smell of that barbecue got him. <laughs> yeah. Looks like most everybody started to eat. Yeah, it's a pretty sight. It's side of beef cooking over the red coals. Funny, isn't it, how folks can be singing and laughing like this, and yet underneath feel nothing but suspicion and distrust. I can't understand how... What's the matter? Give me a match. What? I can't see by this firelight. I want a match. Oh. Great Scott. Isn't that a man lying by the path? Yeah. That's young Parker. And he's lying here because he's dead. Now back to Hop Along Cassidy and our story, Hoppy Takes the Bull by the Horn. On the death of old man Parker, the son offered to sell Hoppy a prized bull for $4,000. Knowing what a wonderful buy it was, Hoppy rode to the Parker Ranch, paid the $4,000, and immediately became involved not only in family feud, but murder as well. Young Parker was found dead behind a barbecue spit while members of the family nearby were enjoying the music. Day is just breaking, as 
as they all wait for the sheriff to arrive. Are you going to stay and help the sheriff, or are we heading for the bar 20? I don't know, California. Since I found these letters on the body, there's some explaining to be done. You mean you ain't going to keep the boy? Maybe not. But he's got your money. The whole 4000 He has? Well, uh, what I mean is he had it. It's the same thing. It ain't your fault he got a knife in the back. Well, coming up the trail, right? Uh, he's sure beating the dust. I bet it's the sheriff. Uh, I can just tell from the way you're looking that you're planning to stay on, doggone it. Uh, howdy, Cassidy. How are you, Sheriff? You didn't lose any time getting here. Well, I like to be punctual on each and every kill in the county. Uh, voters like it that way. Uh, where's the... Uh, the body? Right over here. Yeah, I'm sure going to have my hands full of all that. Everybody's mad at everybody else. You might try finding the money, too, Sheriff. $4,000 of it. 4000 Hey, that'd make a pretty good size wad. That's right. You won't find it on anybody. And whoever did the killing had to hide it fast. That'll look good around the uh, barbecue patio. I'll look under every stone. If it's there, I'll find it. Uh, hey, where are you going? To send a telegram. Telegram? Now, how in tarnation is that going to help? It may answer why a man named Parker would be carrying around mail belonging to a fella named Lige Draper. Told the telegraph man to bring the message here. Yeah, he knows we're grabbing some breakfast here in the cafe. Anything else, gentlemen? Yeah, doggone you was going to bring more bread. Oh, so I was. Forgot all about it. And how about that coffee? You ain't concentrating on your work, are you? Well, I ain't the regular waitress. I'm just doing this to help out. Started today. And you'll be gone tomorrow if you keep this up. <laughs> no, California. I'm a stranger in town. Maybe when you know me better, you'll think I'm a good waitress. Oh, uh, don't pay any attention to him. Oh, uh, Hoppy, look, there's that telegraph teller. Yeah, looking for us, I guess. Yeah, I'll go get the message. Now, I better go get that coffee before he starts complaining again. So you're new in town, are you? And I ain't too sure I like it. Uh, I work awful hard start. for what I earn. Is that so? Sure do, Monday. Hey, how about my day? Here you are, Hoppy. Rip her open and let's see what it says. Hold your horses, California. Uh, <clears throat> let's see now. Man known as Lige Draper left town ten days ago with new employer. Lived at Mrs. Burke's rooming house. She can identify Draper. No further information. See, that's sure good. Uh, that Mrs. Burke can tell us if it's Draper, huh? Uh, if we wait three days for her to get here. Oh, yeah, that's right. Oh, but never mind, Hoppy. We can go back out there and... I say we can go back to the ranch and... Oh, Hoppy, you ain't listening. Huh? Oh, I'm sorry, California. I was thinking of something else. Y you was? Well, what about? I was just thinking. An identification might force a confession. But doggone it, you said it'd take three days for her to get here. So I did. Well, California, you go back to the ranch and help the sheriff. I'll be out soon. Oh, what are you going to do in town here? I'm not sure, but if my plan works, we'll be heading for the Bar 20 tomorrow. <laughs> Yes, sir, California. I caught the hombre red-handed heading for the county line. Do you mean the feller who took care of the bull, Sheriff? Yep. Name's Hank, as much as he admitted he done it. Well, I'm sure glad you cleaned it up so quick. Well, that's what they put me in office for. You can't fool the voters. Uh, see, looks like Hoppy riding in. Can tell him as far as I can see him. Yeah, that means you can load up your bull and head for the bar 20 tonight. <laughs> Doggone, that's good news. Yeah, I'd sure like to buy that there horse of his. Yeah, there ain't enough money in the world to buy Topper. No, I reckon not. Well, Hoppy, we can get headed for home now. Yeah? Yep, I got him hogtied and was just waiting to tell you. Simple as that, eh, Sheriff? Well, I ain't one to be doing no bragging, but he's as good as convicted this minute. It was Hank, Hoppy, the fellow who takes care of the bull. Well, congratulations, Sheriff. Uh, you found the $4,000 on him? Uh, well, no, but uh, I can get him to tell where it is. And did he show you where he hid the knife? Knife? Uh... Well, I figured I could find it any time. A jury'd want to see it. Now, looky here, Cassidy. You're making out like I don't know what I'm doing. Why, he ain't no such thing. Yes, he is, and I don't like it. You want the killer, Sheriff? I got him. I don't think so. 
Is everyone else here? Yep, that fellow who married Parker's daughter. Uh, you know, uh, for a minute I suspected him, but uh, I can see he didn't have nothing to do with it. Well, California, looks like we better get our bull and start for home. Well, it was darn nice of you, Hoppy, to want to help. Uh, uh, where's this bull? Out in the barn. Hey, come along. Mm. Uh, you never did see a bull like this one, Sheriff. Why, he's a... Uh, a good one, eh? Well, uh, let's take a look at this here bull, Hoppy. It ain't helping none to find the money, but... I think you're wrong there, Sheriff. Huh? I doggone. I wouldn't have a wild bull like that. He ain't that way all the time, Sheriff. When Hoppy first saw him, he was like a kitten. Sheriff, look, isn't something moving behind that hay pile? Where? Oh, I reckon you're right. Come out of there, whoever you are, and get them hands up. Come on, you're covered. Don't shoot. Please don't shoot. Ruth. What are you doing hiding like this? I'm here to see if no one takes our bull away. And that means you too, Hopalong Cassidy. But this gun. I'd have killed anyone who tried to take him. And I can believe you would, too. And yes, even you, Mr. Cassidy. Why don't you go back where you came from and leave us alone? Miss Ruth, I'd like to do just that, but there's a killer around here. There ain't no more. You've caused nothing but trouble. Even the bull knows something's wrong. Eh, all this fuss over an animal. Suppose he's smart enough to tell us who done the killing. Sheriff, sure, that is the first really intelligent remark you've made. Well, if you got something to say, Hoppy, say it quick. Because me and Hank are heading for the jailhouse. I didn't kill him. You didn't like him? Well, neither did I. Does that make me a killer? Jack, please. If you'll let me say just one word before you go, Sheriff, and the rest of you folks let me have the floor a few seconds. Now, uh, let's have no more of this nonsense. The Sheriff has to leave and... I know. But before you go, Sheriff, here's a lady you'll all want to meet. A Mrs. Burke runs a rooming house. Mrs. Burke. Mrs. Burke? Would you step into the patio here and tell me if you see the man who came to your rooming house and offered Draper a job impersonating young Parker? I already see him. It's that man there. It's Curtis. Look out, Hoppy! <laughs> now back to Hop Along Cassidy. You better get Curtis to a doctor, Sheriff. My bullet creased his hand pretty bad. Well, twas him or you, Hoppy, and I'm mighty glad it weren't you. <laughs> Why, California, I didn't know you cared. Eh, enough of this palaver. Uh, what evidence you got again, Curtis, Hoppy? This, Sheriff. Why, that looks like the knife. Where did it come from? I searched every inch of the ranch. Who told you where to find it? The bull. Oh, the bull. Uh, now, wait a minute. That's right. When I first looked at the bull, he stood there quiet as a kitten. Then Curtis came in, went into the manger to see if there was enough hay, and the bull immediately became excited. All right, so the bull's temperamental. He just didn't like the smell of human blood on the knife Curtis hid in the hay. Oh. Mr. Cassidy, I'm ashamed of what I said about you causing trouble. I understand. Now, hold on here. You ain't solved things to my satisfaction. I got my voters to account to. What about the roll of money? think I can tell you where to look for that, too. See that handkerchief Curtis has wrapped around his hand? I suppose he has it hidden in there. Look at what's on the handkerchief. Sure, blood from his hand. No, too bright a red for blood. Looks to me more like chili sauce that has dried on the handkerchief. I'm beginning to catch on. Reach down into that crock in the rock stove, California, and see what you find. Right. Whoever killed Draper had to get rid of the money fast. The handiest place was the big crock at the barbecue. Now there ain't no good sense to all There's this. There's lots of sense to it. Curtis paid Draper to impersonate young Parker. Together, they'd sell out the ranch and divide the money. But Draper got greedy, and Curtis had to get rid of him. Uh, Hoppy, Hoppy, here's something all rolled up in paper. Yep. Oh, uh, well, wipe it off and put it in your pocket, California. We'll be the only folks in the West with garlic-flavored bills. Mr. Cassidy, I said I'd never part with Father's bull, but now... No, don't change your mind, Miss Ruth. He belongs right here. Sure, a smart animal, the way he helped solve the killing. Maybe you better run him in the next election. <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean by that? Now, look here, you bow-legged cowpoke. Think we better get going, California. Hey, Mr. Cassidy. You promised to get me back in time for the dinner run. Oh, Mrs. Burke, I want to thank you for identifying Curtis here. We'd never have gotten a confession without you. I may need to call on you again when the judge starts his trial. Oh, sure. You'll find me at the cafe across from the telegraph office. Ooh, what? I know we'd better get going, California. Come along, Mrs. Burke. Huh? Oh, sure. And, Sheriff, I hope you pay as good for me identifying Curtis as Mr. Cassidy here. It's a lot easier than waiting tables. What? Why? Why? <laughs> well, I didn't know I could still blush. Yeah. <laughs> 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 
goodbye from Hoppy in California once again. They're riding back to the Bar 20 now, and I imagine they'll be sitting around an open fire telling all the other waddies about this exciting escapade you just heard. And if things don't happen too quickly, maybe they'll enjoy a bit of quiet ranch life. If you'd like more of these two-gun adventures of Hoppy's, don't forget, you can see him in the fine Hopalong Cassidy pictures at your local theater. Meanwhile, don't forget to tune in next time Hopalong rides the airwaves to bring you more action out of the thrilling Old West. Hopalong Cassidy, starring William Boyd, is transcribed and produced in the West by Walter White, Jr. Hoppy Takes the Bull by the Horns was written by Howard Swart. All stories are based upon the characters created by Clarence E. Mulford. This is a Commodore production.